fugazi, fugazi, it's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a fairy dust. It doesn't exist. It's never landed. It is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. It, it's not fucking real. Manor Lords is a medieval city building simulator that has been years in the making. And today we're going to try and play the game without doing the basic thing that all feudal economies do, which is farming. Yes, we're going to play Manor Lords and attempt to win the game without ever tilling a single field or sowing a single crop. Instead, we're going to bring some crazy ideas from the future into play and see if capitalism is a better ideology than feudal agrarianism. The results might surprise you. Resplendent in his handlebar moustache, the beefcake Tommen, who has quite a nice shiny helmet, is going to be leading our space age capitalist faction to prove once and for all that farming and peasants suck and I like money. We're going to try the restoring the peace scenario template. Now this is a little bit more challenging than Rise to Prosperity, which doesn't have combat enabled, but we want to have combat enabled. That is fun and will allow us to prove to anyone that wants to listen that we are in fact the dominant ideology on this primitive planet. Welcome to the sleepy town of Nuslo. Now our victory condition today is to dominate the entire region. It's actually quite a big region now. Nuslo has some interesting features to it. First and foremost, its fertility pretty much sucks. We've got a little bit of Emma fertility for wheat, but barley, flax is terrible. There's a bit of rye, I suppose, but yeah, fertility here sucks. Farms would be atrocious. Currently, we do have a small camp of homeless people's tents. Now, that may be a feature of late stage capitalism, but in this case, you know, it's also early stage capitalism, I suppose. Uh, we also get one ox, very, very valuable. We probably can't afford to order another ox right now. And some supplies, some bread, some firewood, some stones, some tools, and a bunch of timber. To the west of our initial settlement, we've got a clay deposit. Now that is very, very rich in clay. We also have a wild animal area. That means we can do a little bit of hunting. Can't see the animals, but I'm sure they're there. And far to the south, a deposit of berries. Berries are great and tasty and don't require a farm. Step one on our five step plan to own the world is to get a local economy going. We're gonna need some lumber for this. So we'll set up a logging camp. Let's get going then. So first off, our lovely, lovely unemployed and homeless families are going to go and build this logging camp for us. Vate, the ox handler, is using Andre the ox to transport the lumber over to this new logging camp. And everybody's come to take a look. What a wonderful, wonderful day out. Work harder, peasants. We also need to start getting a little bit more food. We have four months of food remaining before everybody is going to starve. There is a herd of wild animals close by, so I've set up a hunting camp, and any minute now, someone's going to finish constructing, and then we'll go off hunting. We'll get some hides. We will get some meat. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. It's also very, very bad to leave your supplies out in the rain, so I'm building up a granary and a storehouse that will allow me to store my food and lots of these other materials. We may lose stuff to bandits as well, but right now we've got no standing army. We have no people in homes. We can't afford to defend ourselves. If anyone wants our stuff, that they're more than welcome to have it. Our first month is over, we're in April now, and yeah, we're still homeless. Uh, it's going great so far. Everything's fantastic. Pay no attention. Uh, Tormund has got everything firmly in hand. You'll soon be able to get out of the rain and live in a mud hut. Or should I say a burgage plot? I suppose the people do deserve homes though. Let's build a couple of homes. And the beating heart of any community is its marketplace, which allows people to come and kind of buy and sell stuff. We're gonna set up a, a market square here, right in the center of the town, and everyone's going to love it. Of course, a market sounds like a nascent capitalist thing, but do not be fooled, dear viewers. This is basically some sort of communist nonsense. Nobody actually pays us anything for this privilege. We don't get a cut. They're simply residents locally trading between themselves. No, no, no. In order to start true capitalism, we need to make some profit. The foundation stones are laid and we are well on the way to an entirely wooden house being made out of stone. You see, space age capitalism can deliver wonders. Turning water into wine is nothing on turning this wood into stone in the span of less than a few weeks. 
And that is our first ever home completed. We have one fifth of our population is no longer homeless. Reducing the level of homelessness has beaten inequality back and made people like us a little teeny tiny bit more. We could also now install a chicken coop and get a goat shed. Goats and chickens are going to be the lifeblood of our economy, so let's, uh, let's get that wagon on the road. Adding on minor goat herds to each of our houses is in the long run going to be very, very profitable. Granting us a passive income in hides will basically be propping up our future economy and allow us to produce the goods that we need to trade with the rest of the world and finally turn a gosh darn profit. We've probably got some shareholders somewhere, right? Completing that fifth home has meant we are now a small village. Enter the development screen. This is a screen we're going to use to great advantage just wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. For now, I'm not going to spend my development point. I'm going to hold on to it. But we are going to form a militia, a spear militia of 10 blokes with some spears and long shields. It's, uh, it's a great, great team. We've also forgotten to build a well. People are probably going to be a little bit thirsty. Let's just chuck in a well. Here looks like a good spot. Excellent. Pretty close to the center of town, whilst not being in the exact center of town. I'm sure no one will mind. Let's uh, just make that a high priority as well. It's not like we forgot to give them fresh water or anything for two months. It's, it's fine. We've now got seven little houses in our quaint little town of Nuslo. We also have a saw pit, and those people are going very fast to get as many planks as we can. Why do we need planks, ladies and gentlemen? Because we need to build a wooden church. Churches make peasants happy. Wow, that bad boy down here on the corner of the market. Beautiful, what a lovely place to put a church. Do you remember that goat farm we made earlier? Well, that goat farm produces hides. Hides can be turned into leather, and leather satisfies the needs of our people to wear clothes. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to love it. Also, leather is probably stage two of our five-stage plan to making money. I like money. Due to our market food variety, due to our market food variety and the fact people have generally forgotten about how they were homeless three or four months ago, we've had a new family move in. We have six families now in our lovely, lovely area. There we are, the church is finally ready. We've almost got our tannery up and running. As soon as we get that tannery up, then I can take my hides and start turning them into proper leather. Here we go, let's turn some hides into leather. That should satisfy the clothing needs of at least some of the people we have here. Oh, darn it, the bandits stole three leather. Well, yeah, that sucks for us. All right, we have two areas which are completely ready to go. Let's upgrade them level two buildings. Now, doing that will enable us to upgrade the medium size village. Very, very good. And we'll also start producing some regional wealth. We're now a beautiful level two, but we have a lot more yet to do. We have plenty of food. We have berries, some meat, some bread, some eggs, lots of nice things like that. Plenty of firewood, about seven months worth of fuel, actually. And a modest amount of clothing, except the bandits keep stealing our firewood and our hides. That's really annoying. It's the new year. We've hit January of our first year. I guess this is technically our second. Now, we've only been going nine months, but everyone is still alive. Very, very good. No one's died yet. We're upgrading a couple of more homes. Just, just two more that we've got underway, and then we do another one, and we are good to go, and we'll be a large village. We've sighted some bandits out to the east in Immenruth. They could come and steal our stuff. We just have to hope they don't come to the lovely Naslo. In other news, a band of raiders is roaming the lands and could be here within the year. Isn't that just jolly? Um, yeah, we really need to get the money up. We need this, this faster. Please, please, can we have another ox? As soon as we get to April, that'll be uh, just over one year since we started, we'll get a second ox. That is because we're getting five wealth every month, one for each level two home. And there's five level two homes, so we're doing fine. Here we go. Our second ox is on the way. It's so exciting. <laughs> Capitalism has still not really started yet, um, but we will get there soon. Oh, for God's sake, the bandits just stole 10 tools. That was our entire tool supply. Normally at this point, you'd probably be building a farm and 
trying to start, uh, you know, plowing the fields and sowing your crops, and then sitting back in the summer and watching them grow. That would be a ridiculous waste of time. We're missing out on both the summer and winter. Inefficiency would be far too low, and Tommen simply will not stand for it. I'm also going to invest in beekeeping. Now, this is the first policy I've picked. I've got two more policy points available. Beekeeping lets us build apiaries. They allow workers to collect honey. We can sustain up to two in this region. Honey is another type of food, and the more we have different types of food, the easier it will be to level up. We're struggling to fulfill our clothing supply. That's a problem. We do have plenty of leather, 43 in surplus and 19 in the market. What we can do is we can build a cobbler's workshop that's going to cost us five of our regional wealth and five planks. You might think we're making a big mistake here by creating shoes rather than sowing crops to feed our people. But Montu, I hear you shout. People can't eat shoes. Well, number one, yes, they bloody well can if they try hard enough. But also number two, do not fear. We don't plan on feeding anyone shoes. Maybe a shoe soup if times get really tough, but they hopefully won't get tough. Instead, we're going to be creating a high value commodity to exchange internationally on the commodity market. They have a commodity market in the 15th century, right? Like that? Yeah, yeah, good, cool. When that cobbler's workshop is finished, we'll lose one member of the population because they'll be building shoes. But we will have shoes aplenty. And oh, let me tell you, dress a man in some leather and some shoes and they'll be happy for life. With that being constructed, it's time for the next stage of our fantastic plan. We're going to build a trading post and we should probably also upgrade the storehouse. Awesome, the cobbler shop here is now taking in leather and outputting shoes. Why do we care though? Well, that's where the trade post comes in. By assigning a family to work here at this trade post, we can start buying or selling commodities internationally. Now, you'll notice there's an export and an import price. The import price is very, very high, whereas the export price is relatively lower. Looking over at shoes, you'll see that each shoe sells for eight regional wealth. You can import them for 18, but sell them for eight. Now, we can produce quite a lot of shoes, and eight wealth is the equivalent of eight families worth of level two income. That's basically the entire income of this entire community by selling one pair of shoes. It does cost us 48 wealth to set this up, but we've got some points saved up. I'm going to grab trade logistics, meaning establishing a new trade route costs a maximum of 25 regional wealth. Closing and reopening the trading post, we can now see, yes, trading in shoes is going to be worth our time. We don't care if there's any left in our coffers, just sell them all. Something else I think we could do with is a boyer or boya or bob up. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Look, they're going to make bows which we can put onto our soldiers. It's all going to be great. To advance to the next level of village, we do need to get burgage plots up to level three, meaning we need taverns and we need a level two church. Starting with the tavern issue, let's throw a mining pit down on this clay deposit, and then we can get a clay furnace to convert that into lovely, lovely roofing slabs. If all these bandits show up in 60 days as well, I think I'd like to have a manor house. Now, we could build a castle around this manor house. I'm not going to bother building a castle right now. I just want the manor house because it will give me a retinue of knights. Knights are good. Raiders seem to have set upon our settlement. We were not expecting them, but we can rally up the troops from their homes and still win this day. Form up the spear militia here. Form up the archer corps behind. Archers, prepare for battle. Charge! Victory! The outlaws are no more. They're running from the field. Right, everyone back to not farming or whatever it is you don't do. Oh, unfortunately as well, a bunch of bodies need burying from that fight. Ah, yeah, not our bodies, but still unpleasant. We'll set the church worker up. They will deal with the burial. The steps to our glorious capitalist utopia are not the best. So far, we're subsisting on a diet of primarily berries and eggs. There is a little bit of honey involved as well, but yeah, ber berries and eggs, mainly. I'm upgrading the church to a small stone church. Out with the wood, in with the stone. We do still need a tavern, which requires ale. Now, 
If you know anything about ale, you'll know that ale needs barley. Also, it needs some other things too, depending on the type of ale, but let's just stick to the, the game, okay? Ale needs barley. Barley has to be grown in a field. Once we have barley, we can make a malt house and turn that barley into malt. And then it's a complicated process. We can then build a brewery out the back of somebody's home. All right, you with me so far? This is a lot of buildings, a lot of stuff. Oh, and I'm not even done yet, sorry. Then we actually have to build the tavern that everyone goes to and has a jolly good time at. The only issue is our barley fertility is dog poo. And we hate farmers, who do minor points. Um, so we are probably going to have to trade. Well, we can trade in barley at a cost of 12. You heard me right, 12 wealth per barley. But now into stage four. We're going to grab the better deal uh, development here. That is reducing all import pipe prices by 10. Coming back over to here, that means we can grab barley at the low, low price of just two per barley. Pay no attention to the burning buildings here. That's not our village. That's a village that didn't embrace the enlightenments of capitalism and attempted to do farming. Look on this farming folly, ye peasants, and despair. Now shoes are of course better than barley as a resource to make. You see, it would take three or four families working about four to five months of the year in order to produce around 50 barley. That barley would cost a total of 100 wealth to purchase from the exchange market now that we have our discount. Meaning if we took those four families, we put two onto working leather production jobs in the tanner, and we took two more and made them into cobblers to make our shoes, producing, assuming a low value of just two shoes a month, we would then be making, what's that? A total of 16 shoes in the same period, we would make 50 barley. But 16 shoes is worth 128 wealth. That gives us a net profit here of 28 over making barley if we buy, make shoes and sell them and then use the profits to buy the barley. And profit is the capitalist way. So as you can hear from my craziness, shoes are better than barley. Oh, plus 64, that's perfect, we've just traded. Yes, I love commodities, don't you, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, what we're gonna do is we're going to grab, uh, yes, a, a meat import route. And let's get all those buildings up and running. So we need a malt house. Excellent, and we have the cash, good. We also need to build a brewery. We're not quite done because after the brewery comes, of course, the tavern. I feel the tavern should go on the opposite side of the town to the church, that would be sensible. And we'll put it right next to the well here. So they've got a source of fresh water if they really desperately want it. We now have 20 barley in the bank. Excellent, excellent. Bandit stole nine shoes. That's a lot of shoes. Now we're getting, we're adding meat uh, to the diet now. We have berries, eggs, meat. It's all beautiful, B-E-A, beautiful. We have the malt house. We have the tavern. We have the brewery. Let's get this party started. We've got plenty of malt. I believe we're starting to get some. There's the beer. Amazing. What are we missing? Absolutely nothing except the cash. We just need a little bit of cash. Then we can upgrade the cobbler shop, the Fletcher's shop, the brewery, all to level three. When we do that, when we upgrade to level three, not only will we get one additional wealth per family that lives here, we'll get one extra family moving in too. Let's upgrade, we had the money. There we go, the cobbler shop is now a bit better. Let's upgrade the brewery, why not? And you know what, also the Fletcher's shop, no farming. Uh, and we're doing absolutely fine. We are trading our way uh, into all of the nice things that we could want. We've got plenty of food, plenty of clothing, plenty of fuel. Though our economy is not booming yet, let's make it boom. What we're going to do is upgrade basically as many of these plots as we can, and that's just going to push all of these numbers up into the stratosphere. Let's talk about the economy in full now. So, we of course have lots and lots of buildings with the goat building at the back, producing a passive income of hides. We have a few hunters getting some hides in as well, so we've got quite a lot of income with those hides. We then have a number of workers, not that many, producing leather, and then a fewer workers still turning that leather into shoes. 
We then sell the shoes on and use that profit to buy whatever resource we need, for instance, barley or grain at very low prices. On top of that, every single level three building we have houses two families, meaning we are getting four income per month. That means every level two building will get us an income of at least one grain and one barley. Being able to buy barley and grain instantly and not having to wait for the harvest season allows us to level up our village even faster, getting more level three buildings than we otherwise would have access to. In a different campaign, I managed to get up to like 10 or 15,000 wealth by year seven or eight doing this. It's completely bonkers and I think maybe just a teeny tiny bit broken. We are making some large amounts of money right now. Apparently running low on food. I can fix that by just sorting out the trade deals quickly. We'll take 30 meat and then I'll also grab a bunch of eggs out the back of, of some of these places, I think. Yeah, that'll do. I also think it could be time now to grab a windmill. We don't need our own crops when we can just buy other people's by selling them some shoes and making so much money. <laughs> All right, let's also now, I'm going to start buying in grain, okay? Grain is important. This is how we're going to make our bread. Let's get uh, 50 grain. That'll cost us 100. Yeah, plenty. Amazing. There is our 50 grain. Perfect. We're allegedly running very low on food right now, but we've just got our windmill up and running. Combining that with our communal oven means that we've got, yeah, we're going to have plenty of plenty of food. We're going to be baking bread like there's no tomorrow. We're actually making too much bread now, ironically. So I'm going to set up a, a bit of a trade. We'll, uh, we'll buy in the grain really cheap at two a piece, and then we'll sell the bread at four a piece with whatever surplus we don't need, thus turning a very tidy profit, ladies and gentlemen. And we really are turning a profit here. We've now got 800 region wealth, but we're very, very close to a large town. 13 of our 27 plots are all level three or higher. It's a beautiful little town and everyone's busy running about. <laughs> there we are. We're at the maximum level. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We've got two more settlement points to spend here. And honestly, there's not really anything I want to spend it on. I don't Maybe we should jump into advanced skinning over here. I guess there's not really much else. This is going to give us a little bit more, uh, hopefully, hides from all those goats we have lying around. We're making so much money here. I should, I should definitely tax people. Yeah, let's, um, let's get a little tax going there, so that Tom and over here can, of course, make a bit of money. We're just skimming a little bit off the top. It's uh, a little bit of profit. Don't, don't worry about it. I feel like making some weapons now, so we're going to trade in some iron ore, relatively cheap, three apiece, awesome. I don't know why I'm bothering, I don't need to do that. Let's just buy buy the things themselves. Right, so we're going to buy in spears, awesome, and also pole arms, yes. As well as gambesons, why not? Amazing, we spent all the cash, beautiful. We've got people, let's grab a pole arm militia. And now our trading post has really got up and running. We're, we're, we're running away with things here. We've got more food of varieties. We, 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 we can do whatever we want. Um, I should probably get some berries as well because I can. Just make sure we've got all the resources that we could ever possibly want. The helmets, we'll get some of them, why not? Our entire economy, don't forget though, is built on the backs of selling shoes. We are the Louboutin of the medieval period. And to think we did all of this without having to till a single field, having to sow a single crop. We have used the power of shoes to our advantage. And uh, this is, this is yeah, this is great. We, we can do anything we want. Um, clear out the bandit camps. March through the snow. That's right. You're getting paid to do this job. Look lively. Look lively, chaps. I think this does prove that capitalism beats an agrarian economy every darn time. If you've enjoyed this video covering Manor Lords and you'd like to see some more Manor Lords content on this channel, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I do need to say a special thank you as well, just as we're finishing, to Hooded Horse for giving me a little bit of early access so that I could play this game and show it off to you at home.